So welcome back to another episode of the FIFA 20 update show. Today we are discussing all the latest news that has occurred in the world of FIFA 20 over the last seven days. So we've got a lot to discuss today. There is time for potentially two episodes this week, but I'm not sure. We'll see how we go with this one. But we're going to be talking about Kurt getting banned from FIFA Esports. We're going to be talking about the new update that came out this week, plus some other related news as well. So if you do enjoy the video, please leave a thumbs up for me. It always helps the channel. And if you are new to the channel, we do these episodes every week. So if you don't want to miss the latest FIFA 20 stuff, make sure you subscribe today. We've got about 66% of you guys watching the videos but not subscribed. So do yourselves a favor, subscribe today. You won't regret it. So in the FIFA 20 news show a few months ago, I talked about the possibility that there was going to be a license for the Copa Sudamericana, which is like a South American thing. There's also the Copa Libertadores that was also hinted as well. And basically the article was teasing that it could be coming in FIFA 20. It didn't come to the game on September 27th, but according to FIFA All-Stars on Twitter, he's checked the database on FIFA 20's PC edition, and uh, he reckons that he's found these two things. So the Copa Sudamericana 2020, that's like a patch there. And there's also the Libertadores one, which is a patch as well, or a logo. And that was around the 16th of October. Now, more recently, the Copa Libertadores has been going on. And apparently during the broadcast, they are advertising FIFA 20. And it's like at half time and stuff. So a few people have picked up on it. FIFA All-Stars picked up on it between the Boca and River Plate game. And a guy called Maxi also put out a tweet that said, FIFA 20 advertising at the end of the first half between Buenos Aires and River Plate for the Libertadores Cup. And I actually have the clip where the commentator does talk about FIFA 20 in the Copa Libertadores broadcasting. I'm going to play the clip now, make sure you listen, but I will translate it for you because it's in a different language. El mejor fútbol del mundo a tu manera, con FIFA 20, rompiendo límites. Now, according to my translator app, the commentator says, World football your way with FIFA 20 breaking limits. So that's the only piece of evidence we have now. It's pretty much just an update on the situation. No one knows for sure what's going to be happening. I don't really know what to make of this myself. Is it going to be a DLC coming next year? Is it going to be an official license coming in a future update? I don't know. Could it be FIFA 21? I don't even know. So just take this stuff with a bit of a grain of salt. No one really knows what to expect. All we know is that there's files in the game and they're advertising FIFA 20 during broadcasts as well. So the community managers came out of hiding. They announced a new patch and pretty much this whole week has been dedicated to that patch. But... Basically, there is a title update, then there was a squad update, which brought in 30-something new faces as well. So, all this week I've been doing videos on that, so if you missed anything, make sure you check them out. But pretty much you need to download the title update, and then apply the squad update as well, to get the new faces in the game. But there is a lot of new faces, which is pretty cool. Ajax got some, Roma got some, and other players as well, so not too bad of an update. And there was a few career mode fixes in the patch as well, I've made videos on that as well. And there was also a few gameplay tweaks, but... They did mention a Pitch Notes article that I haven't really discussed yet, so we're just going to take a look at that now. So there is a lot to read here with the Pitch Notes, but I'm just going to sum it up. Pretty much they've nerfed the drop back tactic. A lot of people were abusing this online, but they reckon they've made it more realistic now where your team's not going to apply any pressure anymore to the opposition team. Before the update, they would still apply a bit of pressure to the opposition, but now they reckon that they're not going to do that anymore. Tackling as well, they reckon that when you do a standing tackle, you have a higher chance now of recovering possession rather than the attacker recovering possession. I think they had that right the first time before they patched the game and then it sort of went backwards and now they reckon they fixed it again. Finishing and long shots, apparently it is harder to score now from long distance, but apparently they have tweaked a few different things in terms of long shots. As you can see, there's a before shot there where the shots are a bit wide, you know, and then this one is very more narrow where, you know, it looks like he's scoring a lot of the time, but apparently that's because he has 95 long shot attributes. So even though he's got 55 finishing, the 95 long shot attribute means that he's going to hit the target anyway. But when it was the opposite, so 95 finishing and 55 long shot, you could see that he was very accurate with 55 long shot there because of that 95 finishing. But what they've done is they've basically flipped it, where now you can have 95 finishing, but that 55 long shot makes a difference, as you can see much wider chance of uh, missing the goal. So as you can see, big difference there. And that's because they've applied that 55 uh, long shot now to make it harder to score. Now in terms of off-target shots, they've increased the likelihood of shots going off target when taken from 45 feet or further from the target. Here's how a 55 foot shot would have looked before the update. As you can see, very accurate. Here's how it looks after the update. Still pretty accurate, but it looks like more shots are going over the bar. I don't really know. It looks, looks pretty much the same to me. They've changed first-time shots and volleys from the edge of the box and beyond. So this is what it looks like before the update, and this is what it looks like after the update. So it looks like a lot of the shots are going over the bar more now after the update, as you can see with the before one. 
it's less high, you know, I don't know how to describe it, but this one looks higher, you know, it's all the way up here, and this one is pretty low, so yeah, looks like you're going to miss more shots now. They've also nerfed ground and driven ground passes in an effort to reduce the effectiveness of long range passing being taken from difficult angles, Title Update 5 contains the following changes to passing. Ground passes and driven ground passes taken from difficult angles will now result in the ball traveling with less velocity. And of course, they did introduce the new faces, but they didn't really talk about it in the pitch notes. But as you can see, they've uh, tweaked a lot of stuff to the gameplay. We're only one month in and we've already had like four or five updates trying to fix this gameplay. And I think the main issue with the gameplay is the actual delay online. Like you can feel it when you play squad battles as well. Offline, it's a bit slow as well, but I don't know, it's not too bad. I haven't really played many games with this new update to be honest, but... Yeah, I really liked how it was before the patch, and then, of course, the patches start tweaking stuff, and then, you know, it starts to go a bit backwards, but that's to cater to the online people as well, that's the problem as well. But anyway, let me know what you think of current Fever 20 gameplay, is it good, is it bad? Let me know down below. So EA recently had their conference call. This is where they talk about their earnings, their predictions, and stuff like that. So they've provided some statistics for FIFA 20 this year in that conference call. And it seems like good news for the company, despite how much complaints we've had since September. So in terms of FIFA 20 stats, the total players went up 15%. And new to franchise players up 7% due to Volta. So these are people that actually tried FIFA for the first time because of FIFA Street or Volta. So 7% of players did that. And Ultimate Team is up 22% as well. FIFA Online grew in Korea and China, but that is an Asian game. It's not really sold in our kind of markets unless you live in Asia. And uh, yeah, what you need to know is that the numbers are up for FIFA. And despite how much complaining we do, despite, you know, how much comments I get a day regarding FIFA being bad and how many videos I put out being broken and stuff, the numbers are still up. I guess the casual players just don't really care. Like, they're not spending their time on YouTube. They're not tweeting at EA Sports FIFA complaining about all the SBCs and stuff. They're just buying the game, playing it with their mates, trying out Volta. They're not really complaining, not too bothered about career mode. Ultimate Team for them is just a fun thing, they don't really invest in it too much. And uh, it looks like, you know, we're just a minority when it comes down to the numbers at the end of the day. So this has to be one of the biggest stories coming out of this week, if not the biggest story. Kurt, the FIFA pro player that everyone knows, has been banned by EA again. This time it is forever, so he won't be able to play any FIFA esports for the foreseeable future, or forever basically, unless EA changes their mind in the future. They put out a page on their website regarding the disciplinary announcement for Kurt and New York City Chris, which is another pro player. Now, both of these guys uh, got some punishment because they breached some global rules, code of conduct or something. But for Kurt, they've given him a penalty of disqualification from all FIFA 20 Global Series competition and any future events scheduled beyond this season effective immediately. So he is done. He's going to miss all the future EA Sports FIFA 20 Global Series competitive events and beyond. So yeah pretty much gone man. The explanation for this is the fact that he is now disqualified for repeated EA Sports FIFA 20 Global Series Code of Conduct violations which followed a final warning and a suspension from the EA Sports FIFA 19 Global Series for misconduct. And pretty much there was two specific instances that occurred this month on October 10th and 19th. Apparently it was a video content posted by Kurt that got him into trouble. There is a lot of different videos going around saying this is the one that got him banned and stuff, but I'm not really sure which ones they are specifically, so I don't want to throw them in the video because I could be wrong. Now EA also put out a further statement on the Kurt situation, but we'll take a look at that after this one. They've also gave a penalty to NYC Chris, and the penalty was two qualifier suspension from the EA Sports Global Series because he did some sort of colluding with other players in playing games. This is pretty much encouraging experienced players to avoid matchmaking at the same time as the player to gain a competitive advantage. So he got a little bit of a punishment there, but obviously he will be back really soon. Now this is the official statement from EA. Half of it is just a bit of blah blah blah, but the second half of this statement is more interesting. It says, in many instances we believe in second chances, striving to be fair and to give competitors warnings and suspensions before advancing to a more drastic action. In this case, we're sharing that Kurt is disqualified for repeated FIFA Global Conduct policy violations. Kurt can no longer compete in or attend any FIFA 20 events or future scheduled competition. Kurt received a two-month five qualifier suspension on October 18, 2018 for an inappropriate video posted online. Next, on March 25, 2019, Kurt received a final warning for the new Code of Conduct violations. We shared at the time that if policy violations continued, our actions would escalate after the vulgar videos posted on the October 10 and 19th. 
we've disqualified Kurt again. Kurt had many chances and we were explicit that each subsequent violation would result in escalated penalties. The above violations go beyond acceptable smack talk as the consistent harassment targeting fellow competitors, EA employees, and a previous on-air talent during the live broadcast are unacceptable. So pretty much they've said they've given him a lot of chances, but there's repeated violations there. Some people are saying, you know, because Kurt used to speak out about the game, he was very honest. Is there an agenda behind this ban? We don't really know for sure. But he did put out a two-part statement. And basically, he says that he was looking forward to competing. He did explain why he got banned, why he thinks he got banned. And he also mentioned a few other things. But if you want to read the full statement, you can go on his Twitter page and check it out for yourselves. I guess it just comes down to which clips got him into trouble. I have seen some moments where, you know, you could say that EA could get offended by what he did in the clips and stuff. But ultimately, it is EA's house, their rules. They host the event. They put out the prize money and stuff. And when you sign up to the pro circuit you have to sign code of conduct stuff and all that stuff so yeah you have to be pretty professional but i think in the long run kurt will be fine i do enjoy his content and i think his twitch is doing very well as well youtube's looking pretty good so yeah he'll be fine in the long run it's just going to be a shame to not be able to see him anymore competing because I actually tuned into the events to see how he would go. But now, don't really have an interest in it anymore. Now, I do have a lot to discuss still. So tomorrow, there will be another news episode covering the different topics that occurred this week again. And it will be different topics than what we covered today. So should be an interesting video tomorrow. Make sure you tune in again. But if you need something else to watch, make sure you hit the card in the middle. It'll take you to another Fever 20 video of mine. I'll see you next time.